Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and today we're covering topic 5.16, which is aquaculture. Aquaculture is basically just agriculture, but in the water. So it's going to be raising aquatic species like fish, crabs, or seaweed in order to use as food. And then also, you should know that it's sometimes referred to as fish farming, if the species specifically is a fish species. So our objective today is to be able to describe the benefits and drawbacks of aquaculture, and the suggested science skill that we'll be practicing at the end of the video is describing the advantages and disadvantages of a solution. First, we just need to remind ourselves that aquaculture is just raising fish or other aquatic species, generally in cages or some sort of enclosure underwater. And one of the big benefits is that it's gonna take a very small amount of water, space, and fuel compared to deep sea fishing or other methods that are gonna involve taking fish from wild populations. Another benefit is that it's going to avoid the risk of fishery collapse. Remember, this is when fish populations decline by 90% or more. And that's because we're basically breeding and raising our own fish, as opposed to going out deep into the ocean and catching them there. And then finally, it doesn't take up any space on land. So if we're going to compare it to producing other forms of meat, you know, chickens or beef or pork, then it's going to be much more efficient as it comes to land usage. This diagram here can help us kind of grasp what else could be considered aquaculture besides just fish. So we could have organic uh, shellfish, we could do seaweed, and then it can be done sustainably in a way where the waste of the fish is actually used as a nutrient input for invertebrates that we can see at the bottom here. These could be things like crabs or other small aquatic invertebrates that are going to basically clean up their waste. And so these are all methods that would be considered aquaculture. One of the big drawbacks of aquaculture is just like with CAFOs on land, high density of the animals means that we're going to have a really high density of their waste concentration. This can lead to outbreaks of E. coli in the water, or it could cause eutrophication with all the excess nitrogen that's in their waste. And high density also means there's a high probability of disease outbreak. And this disease outbreak, because these fish are kept in cages in the water, can easily reach into the wild populations and spread the disease through those organisms as well. Another problem is that the fish or the species being grown in aquaculture may not be native and they may be genetically modified. So if they escape from their enclosure, they may breed with wild populations or they may become an invasive species. And then finally, we're gonna have to use antibiotics because the fish are in such dense population. And so that increases the risk that those antibiotics contaminate the water because the antibiotics can pass through the fish's bodies and leave their bodies as waste. And so those antibiotics can cause things like endocrine disruption and they can be contaminants in the water. We can look at this diagram here to just kind of summarize a lot of these unintended consequences or drawbacks of aquaculture. So remember that the fish waste becomes really highly concentrated. That's gonna be a contaminant issue. We could have the escape of non-native species or GMOs. We could have diseases from this cage that make it out into the wild populations of fish nearby. And we're going to have the potential for antibiotics to be introduced into this aquatic ecosystem through the fish waste. Our practice of our cue for topic 5.16 today is going to involve describing advantages or disadvantages of a solution. So I want you to identify an advantage that aquaculture has over net fishing, but also explain one environmental consequence of aquaculture. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful. Subscribe for future Apes video updates and check out other notes over here to the side. And as always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.